Before we start training our dogs, we should know what motivates them. With any dog I'm training, I like to begin with food and using the technique known as luring. Now, sometimes people tell me that they're unable to use food because their dogs simply are not motivated by it. First, let me start by saying that every dog has some interest in food. What varies is how intense the food motivation is. If you have a dog with low food motivation, there are a few techniques that you can use in order to increase that food drive. Most dogs that have a low food motivation is usually caused by a few things. Either the dog has been overfed, free fed, given very high value foods such as cooked steak, or sometimes just feeding out of a bowl can cause this. As a result, the dog doesn't seem to care that much about getting treats as a reward. A common technique that can be used to correct a lack of food drive is food deprivation. Now, this isn't as bad as it may sound. For this training, you'll want to use meal time as training time. Bring the dog out and offer food as a training reward. If the dog is not interested, no big deal. Put the food away and try again at dinner. Again, if the dog is uninterested, put the food away and try again the next day. Continue to do this until your dog is willing to work for the food. Be sure not to give your dog any food in between the training. The dog has to understand that he'll only get the food that he works for. I've used this technique on countless dogs and it has worked every single time. When we first start teaching a new command to a dog, we like to start with what's known as continual reinforcement, meaning we reward the dog for the completion of every behavior that we're teaching. But once the dog is performing the behavior on the command alone, meaning without the help of the physical cue, then we can start to space out the rewards. The idea is that the dog must believe that there is a possibility he'll receive a reward, but not that he'll always receive a reward. Another way to look at it is when you first start training a dog, you're a vending machine. Every dollar behavior your dog puts in, they get the reward. Once your dog knows the command, you must transition to the slot machine, meaning every dollar behavior your dog puts in no longer guarantees a reward, but the hope is there. Just like people continue to put money into the slot machines, your dog will continue to perform behaviors for the possibility of that reward if you do the transition correctly. I also think it's worth noting or talking about free shaping. This helps teach a dog to perform behaviors with rewards out of sight. The concept is simple. During the day when your dog does a behavior that you like, mark and reward them for it, but don't let them know that you have rewards on you. Do this with multiple behaviors. Your dog will quickly start to learn that their behaviors can make rewards appear, even if they don't see the rewards. This is very powerful and it helps us create what's known as a proactive dog. I do have a video dedicated to this subject. If you want to learn more about it, I'll be sure to put a link in the description of this video. Now, when do we want to use toys with obedience? If you have a dog that enjoys toys, you can start using that as a motivating factor in your training. Once I have a dog performing all the commands on verbal alone and they no longer need the reward after every behavior, this is a good point that we can start to introduce the toys into our obedience training. Before using toys, we need to make sure that our dogs will give us the toy when asked, you know, the drop it command. We can teach our dogs this command by implementing value transfer. I'll quickly explain the process. Just like everything else we teach our dogs, we want to make sure that we can get the dog to do the behavior with the physical cue before we add the command. Now, you wanna have two toys of equal value. Two completely identical toys will work best for this. First, present one of the toys, have your dog look at you, then use your terminal marker. I like to use the word free to engage your dog into play. This will help create structure during play by asking something from your dog before giving them the toy. If you're playing with tug with your dog, then you'll do one of two things depending on the dog. So option one, if you're playing tug, you will stop moving, which can be difficult for a stronger dog, or you'll release the toy to the dog. The second option works best if your dog prefers to play tug with you. Once the dog stops moving or after you release the toy, you will then give the drop it command. I prefer to use the word out. Just be sure to say the command once. Then bring out the new toy and make it more interesting than the toy that the dog currently has. When done correctly, your dog will release the old toy to play with the new toy. After your dog is used to switching from the old toy to the new toy, 
and responding to the drop it command, you can then transition to the same toy, meaning you stay out, your dog releases, then you use the terminal marker and you allow them to re-engage with the toy you were just using. You want to start to practice waiting for longer periods between giving the toy back, but make it random, meaning sometimes make your dog wait and other times give it back almost instantly. You wouldn't want to slowly extend the time each time because it may demotivate the dog. Make the time duration random. Eventually your dog will know to drop it or your dog will know to drop it after hearing the command. For a full demonstration, I do have a video on this. It's called easily teach your dog the drop it command. When your dog becomes more proficient at the drop it command, we can start working on the more advanced out. I'll explain. While you're actively playing tug, say the drop it command. After you say the, the drop it command, then stop moving the toy. At first, your dog is not going to out right away when you give the command. However, since you're saying out predicts the stop or the freeze of the game, your dog will learn to release the toy even if the toy is still active. Now after doing all this, we can start training with the toy as a reward. So the way that I like to do that is after giving your dog multiple commands, you'll want to start to use the terminal marker and then allow your dog to play with the toy. If you have a dog that prefers to play fetch, you can throw the ball for your dog and once your dog comes back to you, take the ball back using the drop it command and go right back into more training. If you have a dog that prefers to play tug, like my dog Ari, you can use your terminal marker and then follow it with a short game of tug. When you're ready to do more obedience, ask your dog to release the tug and then go right back into training. This is an excellent way to make the training even more fun and engaging for your dog. But what if your dog doesn't have much interest in toys? Well, you can use a few techniques to try and increase your dog's toy drive. Just keep in mind that not all dogs enjoy playing with toys, even if you do attempt to increase their toy drive. The first technique is to clean your house, meaning if you have toys scattered all over the place, pick them up and put them away. It's much like free feeding a dog. Why would your dog want to work for something when they get it for free? Your dog must believe that the only way he'll be able to play with the toy is if he works for it. However, once your dog is willing to work for the toys, you can start allowing them to have toys for free during the day. If the motivation seems to decrease after you allow them to have toys again for free during the day, you can simply repeat the process of cleaning house and making your dog work for the toys. The next technique to enhance toy drive is by building frustration. Let me explain the process you'll want to follow. First, attach a harness or an agitation collar to your dog. Then either hold the leash or connect the leash to a pole or any other object to create a back tie. If you're holding the leash, have a friend begin teasing with a toy just beyond the reach of the dog. If the leash is attached to a back tie, then you can play the role of the decoy, which is often the option that I choose. Building more distance can often create more frustration, so build distance as needed. Keep doing this until the dog becomes frustrated enough to bark. At this point, give verbal praise and reward the dog with the toy for barking. I also like to pet the dog while I'm doing this exercise, but make sure you or your friend holds onto the toy while the dog plays with it. You wanna keep the toy active and fun. If the toy stops moving, the dog can become demotivated. If the dog releases the toy, grab it, run back, and continue to tease again until the dog barks. Now, it can become like a game. Try to steal the toy from the dog if the dog lets go of it. Again, don't rip it from the dog. And if successful, return to teasing. Once again, reward your dog if he or she barks. This helps build toy drive because much like humans, dogs want what they can have. This works best when you start this during the imprinting stage of a dog's life. However, it can work later in the dog's life as well. As always, thanks for supporting the channel by watching, liking, and subscribing. If you wanna learn more about dog training, I have over 150 dog training instructional videos on my YouTube channel. I offer Zoom training sessions, or you can also get a copy of my dog training manual. Check out my website to become a Patreon or shop in either of my two online stores. All the links will be in the description of the video. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys next week.